All right, first things first, once you have Dolphin downloaded, this is revision 5.0, it may be slightly different depending on whatever revision you're using, is we need to configure it. So first, on config, you want dual core and idle skipping to be off. They will cause desyncs. Enable cheats should be off if you're doing like a full game task, but for testing, you can keep it on. Some codes may desync, so be careful with that. Advanced settings, GIT recompiler, interface is up to your preference. Audio, you want to be on it. DSP HLE emulation, that one is the one I use and it works fine. Uh, for GameCube, Wii and paths, these shouldn't matter. GameCube, however, you can do memory card stuff with this. Uh, setting it to nothing will like simulate pulling it out. That's useful for a few things. And then for advanced, you want this to be off. Turning it on will cause a lot of lag, which can be good for testing some things, but it'll pretty much always desync your uh, task playback. So I wouldn't mess with that unless you really know what you're doing. And then another important thing to configure is the hotkeys. Save state and load state default should be fine, but you have toggle pause, frame advance, and read only mode here, which I set to F, G, and H. And those are the main task tools you're going to be using other than save states. So it's good to get familiar with those keys and have them set up as something you can easily access. Lastly, controller setup, mostly just standard. Just look up a tutorial on how to do it for your controller or adapter or whatever you're using. So now that you have Dolphin set up, you're ready to make your first task movie. And I will go over the basics of everything you really need to know. So first things first, you want to go to your main Dolphin go to movie and then hit start recording input. It's grayed out here because I already did that, but just click it and it'll work. And what I like to do here is you've got to pause the game, go to emulation, save state, save state, and then you can name it playback or whatever you want. What this does is it creates a save state at the very start of your movie that you can load back at a later date to start everything from the top. So it's very important that you create this so you can actually play back your movie. Now, the first tool we'll go over is save states. I'm sure most of you already know the basic functionality of a save state. You can save a state and then load it again and you'll be taken back in time pretty much. Now, what some of you may not know you can do with save states is now that we have the movie started recording what we can do is do some inputs after a move or after a save state then turn read only mode on by pressing the hotkey we assigned earlier you'll notice that in the top left you see it flash read only then now when we load the save state it'll play back the inputs we did exactly so it's just a complete recreation of what we just did and that's very useful in tasking so you can like make a bit of progress and then if you make a mistake you can just go into read only mode and then go up to the progress make a new state and then continue on so what i mean by make a new state and continue on is let's say we want to stop here right and then move on from here because after this is bad right we make a new save state here turn read only mode off load the state and now we can go do what it was we really wanted to do, right? So the next tool we'll go over is Frame Advance, which sounds pretty self-explanatory, and that's because it is. When you press the key, it pauses the game. Uh, pressing it again will advance the game by one frame every time you press it, and you can set certain inputs to work on certain frames. So like, say I want to jump on this frame, you can just hold A, Keep advancing the frames and you'll see we jump right on that frame so this is useful for pretty much everything hitting a one frame jump or hitting a cruise boost for example just anytime you need to do a frame perfect input the frame advance key is what you want so now that you've done whatever it is you want to do in the tasking in order to save the movie it's very simply just go to movie export recording and then name it whatever you want to Sometimes that won't work. It grays out the uh, export recording button for some reason. If that happens, then you can just close out of the dolphin window and then it'll pop up with a save prompt and you can do it there. So yeah, that's the basics of using the task tools. So now I want to go over the dolphin memory engine, which is a nice program which can 
help you out when you're tasking a bit. So there's a bunch of values here because I have a preloaded list that I'll include for you to download. And it basically shows you various memory addresses and the value they currently are in the game. So like for CB speed, if we do a slow bull here, it'll show you the speed of the bull, right? So a slow one's 0.6, a walking one is about 5-ish. And then you can also set it. So let's set it to 25, for example. We can lock the value and it'll be fast. So it's useful for fiddling around with various memory addresses and testing scenarios that are theoretical. Like, let's say you want to get a LCB in an area, but you can't find one. But you want to test to see if something's possible. You give yourself a fast boost to make sure. There's other values in here, like momentum. You can test like how much VMS momentum you'll need for something, for example. So yeah, that's you can use it to watch it or set it yourself. It's really something additional to just play around with and just test things with. Up here is the memory searcher. That's kind of complicated to get into. I'd recommend just looking up a cheat engine tutorial, and it's basically the same premise here for like how to find various values. I have most of the useful ones included in here already, though. You can ask in the Discord if there's any specific one you want people to look for, though. Okay, onto the demonstration portion of this video. I will be doing a quick little run through of a Caves Bull Boost Jump, because that'll be kind of quick and easy and it'll go over all the concepts we discussed. So the first thing you want to do is go up to your main dolphin window, movie, start input recording. I've already done that, but you just click this and then the movie starts. And then you want to go to emulation, save state, save state, and you want to save your playback state here. So I normally name it playback or start or something like that. That just something so that you can recognize what it is when you go to back to playing it back. So you save that. And then I like to advance a few frames and fill up the save slots that I'll be using so I don't accidentally leave the movie. So the first thing you do in CB2J is you get grabbed by the hand into the box, right? So let's walk over there, get a cruise boost, and jump into the wall and slam. All right, so we got the slam. So we're going to want to save a state here and then see if it goes in the box. OK, it did. That's good. So we want to hit the frame now, right? So we want to turn read-only mode back on. Load the state again, and then make a new state right before the hand goes away. Turn read only off, load the state, and now we want to frame advance to the frame we can do the bull boost, which usually is the frame you see Hans' middle finger barely on the screen but nothing else, like this one. So we'll save a state here, hold X for a frame and see if it works. All right, it didn't. This is kind of kind of differs sometimes. It might be because this is a box bull boost. So we didn't get the bull to come out, so that means we were early. So let's load our state again and try the next frame. Okay, try the frame after. All right, there we go. It worked. So now that we've made the progress, we want to make here. We want to turn read only back on. Load the state again. And then advance to when we start the bowl and make a new state. So now we need to set up our angle and get it the jump frame. So we turn read only off, load the state again, and at this point, this part's kind of trial and error, right? So you're just going to keep adjusting your control stick until you get an angle that looks like it'll work. So that one was too far to the left. That one was not far enough. Alright, that looks like it'll be close enough for our desired effect right now. So, we went too far though, so what we want to do is read only on, load the state, frame advance to when we get the jump, make a new state, read only off, load the state and then get ready to spin and we can keep trying this until we get it to where we want it to 
or it can also help if you frame advance it. And try different angles. Eventually you'll get something that kind of works like this. And then we can spin to cancel our momentum and we're close enough. I don't want to spend too much time in the demonstration part of this video. So now we're done with the movie for now. We want to export it by going to movie, export recording, and then name it something that's good for you to remember. So we'll just call this CB2J. All right, now we want to play it back and see how it worked out. So close out of the main dolphin window. I'll give you another option to save. So CB2J A. I like to be careful and make two copies of my saves because I'm terrible at losing things. So now we, got, we want to go to movie, play input recording, do cb2j.dtm, and wait for Dolphin to completely load. Some revisions take a while. But once it does load, you want to go to emulation, load state, load state, and then pick your playback save state. And you can watch the movie playback. And if at any point you want to make a revision, you can always save a state, turn read only off, and then load the state and then keep moving. So I want to go on from here, right? Save a state, read only off. And oh, now I'm killing myself. Cool. But yeah, controls return to us and we can keep working on it. So hopefully that demonstration uh, kind of briefly went over everything you needed to do. Alright, so hopefully you have a basic understanding of how to task now. Uh, you won't be good at it starting out. Like, trust me, it took me a long time to get where I am and I'm not even that good at it. It's just a lot of trial and error and experimenting around until you get used to using the toolkit available for you. But now that you actually know how to use the toolkit, you should be able to just start with some small projects and see what you can do from there. Just keep at it, keep trying. If you have any questions, just ask around. We'll be glad to help you. So yeah, thanks for watching and happy tassing.